Okay, so today I'm going to help you get through recognizing formulas for common inorganic acids, carbox, carboxylic acids, which are not hard. There's only one. And bases from families one and two. All right. So that's the first thing we're going to do today. And all acids begin with H. All acids begin with the letter H. And all bases end in OH. So whenever you see a compound that starts with the letter H, whether it's H2 or H3, that is going to be an acid. If you see it ending in OH, that's a base. And these two are opposite things, right? What do acids do to your skin? Burn. What do bases do? They dissolve. They dissolve. All right? So, acids, ba acids burn, bases dissolve. Bases are designed to cut through oil, grease, things like that. Now, you saw that the, um, the bologna in the sodium hydroxide was very hard. What it did was get rid of all the fat. And the fat's what makes the meat soft. All right? So, to reiterate, if you see an H in front, it's an acid. To see an OH in the end, it's a base. Now, here are some common acids that we're going to deal with. Um, it wouldn't hurt. Let, let me go through them quickly first. Hydrochloric. Hold on. Hydrochloric, HCl. You get the hydro from the hydrogen and chlorine gives you the chloric. Hydrofluoric. This is the one that will do bad things to you. It will dissolve bone. It will dissolve glass. Nitrix, the one used in explosives. Now, one of the things that says recognize carboxylic acids, all right? So, how do you recognize that an acid is an acid? H. How do you recognize that it has carbon in it? C and oxy. O. So this is a carboxy acid. All right, it has H, it has C, and it has O. So if you see an HCO compound, that's a carboxy acid. Sulfuric's in your car battery. Phosphoric is in your pop. Now, here's the common bases that we're going to be dealing with. And let me put it on pause so you can write these. Trevor asked why these last two, the calcium and the magnesium hydroxide, have two hydroxides. It's, it's as easy as this. Sodium has a plus one charge, hydroxide a minus one. What's plus one minus one? Zero. But calcium has a plus two charge, hydroxide a minus one. So how many hydroxides do I need to balance with that plus two? One more. For a total of two. And when you, and we didn't go through this a lot with nomenclature because you didn't need to know it. When you have these things called polyatomic ions, you have to put them in parentheses to show that you have two of them. All right? So, on the test, in April, it says be able to recognize different acids. So if you see an H, that makes it an acid. And the other part will help you determine the name. And as we said here, this is a carboxy acid. It has carbon and oxygen and hydrogen. All right, let's keep moving. Now, here's the next thing. 
which in acid-base neutralizations, the same thing happens every time. So today's second thing is predict the products of an acid and a base neutralization. Here we go. Well, what happened here? What did I do? Oh, there we go. Okay, acid-base neutralization is as simple as this. You start with an acid. How do you deter how do you know it's an acid? H. And you add it to a base, which is the opposite, which ends in OH. Now, listen carefully. That is going to create a salt, not table salt. It will in some cases, but not all cases. And water. So if you mix an acid plus a base, you're going to get some kind of salt that will precipitate out. It'll be a solid. And water. In the case of hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide, you will get table salt and water. And all these reactions create heat. And the reason I'm saying that, guys, is don't mix bathroom cleaners and drain cleaners because you'll get a very violent reaction and you don't need that all right well you don't need to it's just kind of a reminder I will show you and I've showed you before when we've mixed hydrochloric acid and and this is basically hydrochloric acid is the main ingredient in a drain cleaner I mean in the bathroom cleaner sodium hydroxide main ingredient in drain cleaner it the reaction gets very hot very fast it gets it boils and you got to be careful it doesn't spray back in your face because you got something that's going to burn you and dissolve you at the same time. So, if you ever notice, and this is your kind of helpful household hint for the day, is they always tell you to wear rubber gloves and sometimes safety glasses when you're dealing with these chemicals at home. Specifically, if you're cleaning the bathroom, it doesn't hurt to wear gloves because all that stuff that's used to clean and disinfect your bathroom is slightly acidic. And it will just give you, it'll dry your hands out, it'll, you know, give you, if you use a lot of it and you're really going to town in the bathroom, it may burn your hands a little bit. This, guys, the Drano, the sodium hydroxide, the problem with putting that into a sink is you never know what's down that drain that's going to get reacted and it may come back on you. So the best thing to do with Drano, pour it down there, walk away, let it sit for the 15 minutes, it'll come back on. It'll come back on. Um, it'll sit for the 15 minutes and then you run hot water after it to dilute it. Because you really don't want this Drano sitting in your drains either because it'll eventually eat through your pipes, especially if they're metal. If we take sulfuric acid, car battery acid, and Drano, I'm going to call them that for, you will get what's called sodium sulfate in water, guys. Or if I take nitric acid and potassium hydroxide, also a base, you get potassium nitrate and water. All these guys here, everybody, are considered salts. So, the two things you need to here. 
Acids plus bases make a salt and water. All right, we'll have some quizzes over this stuff next week as we practice it more. Everybody ready to move? Let's keep going. Recording's back on. Now, this, is, this one is pretty straightforward. Describe tests that can be used to distinguish an acid from a base. One. It's up to you. Describe tests that can be used to distinguish an acid from a base. The key words. Tests that can be used to describe distinguish an acid from a base. Or and we started doing that last week a little bit earlier in the week. Okay, let's keep going. And the two simplest way, or the simplest way is using pH paper. The little strips that I stuck in the, huh? Oh, go back. All right. You're going to come up and show them to me, and I'm going to give you points for them. All right? So you don't have to tear them out. What? So you can, so you can learn things. All right. Good to go? Okay. So the simplest way, guys, let's finish up. We're getting done here. The simplest way is using pH paper. It's the little strips I used and dipped them in the um, in the acid or the base last week. We'll do some a lab next week with that stuff. And so, and then the other is called the titration, and that's what Chem's doing today, kind of in a roundabout way. And it involves experiments and a lot of math, or not a lot of math, but more math than you'd want to do. Right, Brennan? <laughs> and you got to be real careful when you're doing the experiment. Simplest way, pH paper. And if you have a swimming pool, you will you use pH paper all the time. You go and test your pool to make sure it's at the right pH level. Too low, you burn. Too high, it doesn't kill the germs. Everybody good to go? All right. Now, this should say given their pH. Now, we talked about this earlier, and there's a slide for it. So you don't have to, I'll show you what you got to do when you do the next. So you're going to classify things, whether acidic or basic given their pH. All right. What? That's a given. I, I added an N. I did a poor job of doing writing this up last night. All right. So you're going to classify things, whether acidic or basic, and we've, we've gone through this a little bit already. Everybody good to go? 
Oh, all right. All right, so here it is. And we've seen this already, so don't try to write this down. All right. A pH, guys, this is the part you would write down. A pH equaling 0 to 6.9 makes it acidic. All right. pH of 0 to 6.9 makes it acidic. This is the part you write down. You don't have to draw this whole thing. And you can see... Stomach acid is in there, apple juice, soft drinks, tomatoes, coffee. Even milk is slightly acidic. Battery acid. Now for a pH of, and let's go down here, pH of 7.1 to 14 makes it basic. Drain cleaner. Bleach, baking soda, soap. We've already talked a lot about soap and detergents. They're designed to cut the grease and dirt on your clothes so you turn out clean again. <laughs> so up here, pH of 0 to 6.9 acidic. Down here, pH of 7.1 to 14 is basic. And what's water? Seven, neutral. We're almost done here. Everybody good to go? And finally, one last thing. And you don't have to write this down. You just need to think about it. And we're going to talk about it next week. How do we go from a bird that looks like the one on the left to a bird that looks like one on the right? Oil. No, it's not oil. That bird, that bird has been mummified. So we're going to talk about that. There's a lake in Tanzania, Africa, that where these birds have their mating and nesting areas that they look like this to start with, but if they hang around too long, they become stone statues. And we'll, ha we'll talk about, it's called Lake Natron in Tanzania. And next week, we're going to talk a little bit of, we're going to have a simulation, a computer simulation. We're going to talk about acidic and basic lakes lakes that can kill you, acid rain, and have a lab or two. So...